All right. So also you're being recorded because we need to post on YouTube. Cool. Welcome to intro to meeting. This is our second tutorial in R. You were here last week. We had speakers from SASCOM. They were awesome. Week before that, we were off. Week before that, we had intro tutorial one. So for those that haven't signed in or haven't been signed in by Jacob, scan the QR code to sign in. Or if you're online, um, be sure and scan that for a second. And then we will get started with Kahoot. No prizes this week, but it's okay. Maybe another week. All right, code for Kahoot is here. Yeah, you do the very one now. Sorry, yeah, I was a little, I was actually yeah, going to talk to you about that because I, don't know. I wouldn't know exactly. like, if somebody has to question that's about that. Yeah, cool. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I actually uh, moved from LA or wherever I'm playing right now to, to come through. Hey, Jake, Jacob, it's okay. There's a QR code you can scan too. So we're yeah, good. I saw the Omaha thing really inspired me. So I had to come through. Okay, that's fine. I mean, I think right. I'm going to be backing so up. So there's probably what? Two, four, six. Maybe I'll get to be DH. 20, 40. All right, when we get to about 40 ish. All right. Anybody else actively trying to get in the Kahoot that's not in? Speak now, forever hold your peace. Chat, I can see you if you're virtual. I see the chat right here. Um, so let us know if you're not in yet. All right, looks like we're good to start. Um, Lou's going to take care of the first few. I'm going to take care of some at the end. All right, what was the final score of NC State's win over Furman this Saturday? Credit to you guys if you stayed for that entire game and, and actually know the final score. A lot to a little is not an option. 45-7. <laughs> Which NFL team will be featured on the first ever in-season edition of Hard Knocks? Colts. Oh. Which current NHL team was formerly known as the Quebec Nordiques? I missed this one when I went through it. <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah, it's just either you know it or you don't. For sure. We don't know in Colorado. Colorado. Uh, MLB players wore the number 21 in honor of which baseball legend who primarily paid, played for the Pittsburgh Pirates? <laughs> Roberto Clemente. Clemente, great story. If you've never heard of him, I did a bunch of um, stuff down in Latin America where he's from. I accidentally died in a plane crash. Sad, but great guy. Uh, the NC State men's soccer team secured a win against which school on Tuesday? JMU. Yeah. Is that the one that went like all the way around the, the wall? Yeah. Dang, that's wild. <laughs> Which Atlanta Braves player hit for the cycle on Sunday despite only watching five pitches? It's the lowest of any player ever. The previous low for a cycle was eight pitches. So five pitches is four swings and one watch ball. That's crazy. Next question. Which player left the New York Knicks to sign with the Dallas Mavericks this week? NBA news. That's what I'm saying. I just scraped the bottom of the barrel. Yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. Frank and Next one. Through two weeks, which player leads the NFL in rushing yards? And I played against him in three leagues this week <laughs> in fantasy. So 
That's pretty yeah. fun. Oh, Rough goodness. Sunday. Yeah. I'm also a Saints fan, and I headed down to Charlotte to watch that game. So just yeah. overall, not a great day. But, you know, we rebound. Hopefully, Jameis will come back and not suck that hard. For the Eric Henry. Bamagran. <laughs> What is the NC State women's cross country teams? Something. Team, team ranking. ranking. Team ranked. ranked. Come on. Number one. Sure. That's why they're our picture for the week. Top in the country. The goats. All right. So we're going to review what kind of what we covered in our for during intro one. So if you were, weren't here a couple weeks ago, that's fine. We're reviewing now. If you were, remember. Because these will be the useful stuff that we're using today. What's the name of the package that we use to manipulate data in R? Tidyverse, Layman, GZPot2, Manipular. Tidyverse. So Tidyverse is a collection of packages. So the specific one that we used was the Diplo package. Tidyverse is good enough for us. Next question. What is the symbol for pipe in R? It's like the one that chains stuff together, like the word then. What's the symbol for that? Yep. So the one in the top left in the blue, that's your assignment operator. It means you're saving something to a variable. Other two are kind of garbage. Next question. After installing a package using install.packages, what function do you need to use to utilize the package? So talk about like opening the book up to use the stuff inside of it. What was that? What was that function called? It's the library function. Good. Next one. What's the function used to pick out certain columns of a data frame? Not library, we just use that one. So the select function. So you're selecting different columns. You can select them in different orders. Next question Which function is used to pick certain rows based on a condition given to values in the certain column? the filter so we can say filter home runs is greater than 30 and it gets people that have more than 30 home runs does that sound good does that make jogging some memories cool last question what does the arrange function do does it change the order of the columns or change the order of the rows change the order of your rows. So if you want to sort it in the sense of we want the highest home runs at the top, the lowest home runs at the bottom, that's when we use the arrange function. To do change the order of the columns, we would use the select function again. You would just type in the columns in the order that they need to go in. So the winners, third place, Brandon. Second place, Doug Dimon. <laughs> and first place. Zach, nice job. Zach, are you here in person? Nice. Thank you. Aiden and Jason, nice work. Y'all as well. All right. Back to the PowerPoint. Whoops. Uh oh. Let me fix it on my end. All right. So if you did not sign in earlier, if you're here in person, you should have scan the QR code. If you're online, scan the QR code. Going to announcements. Announcement number one is a new one. Michael Lopez is zooming in um, to NC State Statistics Department. So Michael Lopez is the head of analytics for the NFL. Super awesome guy. He worked on a paper with Luke Benz, who we'll talk about a little bit later discussing home field advantage during COVID in uh, soccer 
overseas. I forgot exactly which league, probably the Premier League, but who knows. That conversation is going to be held over Zoom. It's free. It's October 1st at 1 p.m. Um, when we sent out the slides, there's like a link in the speaker notes, so you can follow that link there. Speaking of Michael Lopez, he's in charge of the Big Data Bowl. So the Big Data Bowl is the NFL's competition for data. Um, if you are interested in being mentored by somebody specifically, if you're a minority, definitely sign up. Um, the link to that is there as well. The application is due this Thursday. Um, so there's different stuff. You get advice from current analytics employees, helping your Big Data Bowl submission and group training seminars. So, Probably pretty quickly because uh, Big Data Ball opens up into this month, beginning of next month ish. Um, so that's probably when they come back. Good question. Next question uh, or next announcement Nessus, the New England Symposium on Statistics and Sports, is Fridays in October. The times vary week to week. Um, so that's free. And the link to that is there as well. It happens every Friday during the month of October. These are going into conferences. Econ Sports Analytics Symposium Conference. Um, if you're competing in the poster competition, that's due October 1st. Um, otherwise, it's really, really fun to go to. I actually got to go to this one last year. It is virtual. The programming tutorials are really good. You guys should probably be able to view the intermediate ones after we discuss, go through our tutorials here, which is cool. Some of the speakers, Megan Hall with hockey. And I forgot who's doing the other one, but that's really good as well. I really enjoyed it. Carnegie Mellon Sports Analytics Conference is known as one of the best ones around, period, especially for a cheap price, not in the $100, it's usually around 10. So there's a poetry contest there as well, speakers, and then price, like I said, is around $10. Last question, thoughts on a t-shirt that looks something like this? Yes, I'm seeing some nods, chat, like, yes, no, on Zoom, wherever you are. Feel free to comment. I mean, I'm seeing some yeses, so. We'll probably work on something, getting something like this together. Um, work on that. So yeah, there's some yeses there. Cool. Calendar updates. So we're like finalized our calendar. We had one speaker, try to get him, couldn't come this semester. We're gonna to try to get him next semester. Next week is a tutorial. It's gonna be in person or virtual if you want. The week after that is 10-6. We're having a competition against Villanova with a data viz competition. So we're learning data viz today and next week competing the weekend after that. That's going to be on a Wednesday because we're off Monday and Tuesday for fall break. So please show up. It's going to be a lot of fun and hopefully we'll win. Um, we got to that will be a virtual meeting. There will be no in-person option for that one is a speaker. Uh, it's former president Marshall Furman. Um, his Big Data Bowl team was one of the finalists for the Big Data Bowl this past year. And he's an awesome guy. Like I said, former SAC president. So excited to have him. 10, 18, and 10, 25, we're going to wrap up our tutorials doing intro four and intro five. Those will be pretty quick. Um, 11, 1, 11, 22, we're going to do, comp we have a competition that's planned if they don't flag on me, which would be annoying. Um, so if they do, we're going to have an in-house one. If not, it's going to be with another school to be named. It's a, it's a good school to compete against. It'll be fun. Week of 11, 15, that meeting is canceled. There's a women's basketball game, so I can't be here. So we're just not going to meet show up to that because that'd be fun and like us um, last one will be a virtual competition with that school to be announced on 11-30 yes same times we're good same times every week every day just kind of bearing on dates whether in person virtual or not this is also sent out so like any other questions um try to inform again if you missed that Good, cool. Intro tutorial number two. Oh, wrong mouse. So intro tutorial number two is called data and graphing. So last week we talked about more generic stuff in R, such as how to, how to manipulate data, what's a vector, what's a data frame, all that stuff. Please do not break on me. Someone help me fix this. <laughs> I didn't do anything. I'm just trying to lower it so I can yeah. see everybody. Yeah, that's all I'm saying. Just put on the floor. Let's not do that. All right, we'll just leave it. Oh well. Um, so this week we're gonna learn how to read in data, 
we're going to learn some packages that are really good with data and we're going to have to graph because we need to learn how to graph before we have a competition about graphing against Bill Nova in about two weeks. Fair enough. So one of the things that we need you to do, I sent out an email on Friday that had a CSV attached to it. It's called Kimpom underscore 2019-02-11.csv. If you can download that to a folder that you know where it's at, um, that would be really appreciated. So take about a minute or so and do that. If you click to open it up, that's what it should look like. All right, cool. We're going to go ahead and move on. If you haven't downloaded that, please do so. Does anybody know what CSV stands for? Comma separated values. So as you can see, there's a comma in between every one of these values or variables or what's up? If I download it, it opens it up. That's fine. Yeah, I just wanted to open it so you can actually see the call the commas. Um, so if we want to read in a CSV, there's a couple of different ways that we can do that. The first way we're going to do it is with the read underscore CSV function. And then you type in the name of the file. So Ken Palm underscore 2019-02-11.csv. All right, I was not planning on that. So it read in on mine. Did it read in on everybody else's? Bingo. We're going to talk about that if it doesn't work for everybody else. <laughs> so if you tried to read in the CSV, did it work? No. What does your error say? So I could not find the file. All right. So there's this thing called the working directory. That's what this WD stands for. If we type in get WD, it says for get working directory. And it tells you where on your computer R is looking for a file. So for me, it's looking on my desktop, the sports analytics folder, intro tutorials, intro to data and graphing. So if I go, let's look, desktop, sports analytics, intro to tutorials, intro to, boom, there it is. So that's going to be different for every single person, what that's going to look like. To copy and to set your working directory, you click up here where it says your actual file path, you copy it, and then you paste it into the set WD function, which stands for set your working directory. So then when you set your working directory, and then you run the read underscore CSV, it should be able to read it in for you. Because you can't find something. If I'm looking over here from my computer, I'm never going to find it if I'm looking this way. You got to look in the right spot to be able to find it. Yeah. If you're on a Mac, I think it might be a little bit different. You might need to double click on or like two finger click on it and then click get properties. And it should have the file path somewhere there as well. If you're on a Mac and you're in person in that word, you flash thumbs up, thumbs down. What's up? Um, yeah, read underscore CSV is the Tinyverse version. So if you have not done library Tinyverse, I didn't type that. That's why you guys don't know that. My bad. I already practiced a little bit, so that's why mine already recognized the Tinyverse. Um, 
So you have to do library tidyverse um, set wd read underscore csv and that should work. And we're going to save that to a variable called kinpom. The issue, okay, so there's a question in the chat. It says, mine says error slash u u dot hex digits. Um, first thing you need to check is if your string, if your um, file path needs to be in quotes. If that doesn't work, what you can do is you can do control F and search for all of your slashes. Some people might have them backwards. And then you replace it with the correct slash, or I guess this kind of slash. Let me know if that helps fix your issue, Sam. Replace it with a slash that looks this way. All right. Raise your hand if you got the file read in. Yes, no. If you did get it, raise your hand. If you didn't get it, don't raise your hand. If you didn't get it, raise your hand. Okay. It's okay. Slash thingy word. Carl. Cool. Um, question in the chat says you can't find the file. Um, have you set your working directory is probably the thing I would say next. So. Well, let's talk afterwards. I think at this point we're just going to have to move on. Not your fault. Just kind of when you get your stuff. Yeah, mine's, well, mine says, uh, does not exist in current work cool no one likes r today cool <laughs> anyways let's move on and we'll just have to move on i'm sorry another thing that we can do is we can use packages that don't have to import data so that's really really nice you don't have to read in anything it just is already there for you so we're going to use a new package it's called um dev tools I'm not going to install it because I already have it installed on mine. And of course, we need to call it with the library. Now, what DevTools lets us do is it lets us get packages um, that are from the internet already on GitHub. GitHub is a website where you can share and collaborate code. For example, we were the guy I talked about earlier. Um, Luke Benz, he created a package called NCAA Hoopar. And what it does, it lets you pull play-by-play -play -play data from ESPN for college basketball, men's college basketball. So the way that we're going to do this, we're going to copy this at the end of the GitHub, pull it back into R, and we're going to run the install underscore GitHub function. That's from the DevTools package. You may see that abbreviated DevTools colon colon install underscore GitHub. And then you put the person that made it and the name of the package. Once you install it, um, again, I already have installed. It works just the same as install.packages, but if you're pulling it from GitHub, you want to use DevTools um, install underscore GitHub function. You do the same thing to library. And it loads in the package for you to get ready to use if we wanted to use it. I'm gonna kind of word vomit a bunch of packages that are useful. Um, so there's NFL scrap R. Also note, they like making puns with R because R is just a letter of the alphabet, hence why it's intro with a capital R. Um, we have NFL Fast R, NFL Simulator, College Football Scraper, going on to basketball, NBA Stat R, NCAA Hoop R, Hoop R, 
we hoop that's women's hoops i use that package that's how i um got started with the women's basketball and i'm sorry we hoop and air ball baseball there's baseball R and layman we've used layman before we used that last week baseball R is kind of in disrepair we're working on people are working on fixing that um soccer is soccer football R gg soccer world football R and a guy named tyrone mings made a package with his name on it Cricket, this is the last one. Actually, no, next to the last one. Cricket. Um, we have Cricket R. No, Cricket R, lowercase. And if you are interested in learning more, there's a website called brendankent.com. He's that's one of my favorite sports analytics podcasts. It's called Measurables. Um, great. Great website, bunch of different articles for getting into sports analytics, specifically this one that has a ton of different resources of packages for sports analytics in R. Any questions? Need me to go up and share something again? Sports, what's up? Yes. Most of these, what you'll have to do is you'll just have to look up. Let's say I want to download NFL Fast Dog. Whoa. NFL Fast R. You just go to Google and search in NFL Fast R. Boom, there's a website for it. Cool. Yep, you can just NCAA Hoop R. That's how most of them work. There's more that I didn't mention. Hockey, I know, has some. I don't know what it's called, but there's. And one of the cool things is about our people, you can make your own package. I'm going to try to make my own package within the next year or so uh, that has minor league baseball data. That'd be a lot of fun because I love doing that. I like doing the data. So why not put them together? So people are making their own. You can add on to other people's packages. That's why we chose R rather than using Python or SAS. Our packages are really fun to make and deal stuff with. Now to the fun stuff for today. Um, assuming that you have the data in. Graphing. So one of the most important things that we can do as sports analysts is make graphs and charts that other people can see and understand immediately. So who who all came from the career, I'm sorry, the student involvement fair? All right, so during that, we had this whole side of it. It was just graphs that we made, different stuff. The basketball graph that me and David made, baseball graph that um, I had a couple of those. Uh, one of our other members, Chris, had a baseball graph. That's what draws your attention. That's what you see and understand, right? So if we can make those in explainable ways that other people can understand, that's how you're going to get people to like say, hey, he knows what he's doing or she knows what she's doing. Let's hire them, right? So the, um, the package that we're going to use for graphing is called ggplot2. You may say, I haven't downloaded it yet, but you have. It's part of the tidyverse. So it still is good to say explicitly the library of the ggplot2 package. It's really nice. If you do have the data in, we're going to use this Kimpom data frame that we have up here. Okay. So the first thing that we need when we're doing a ggplot state or a ggplot is the ggplot statement. And there's a few different things. We have the data argument which is what data set do we want to use? Well, we want to use the Ken Palm data set. Then we have the mapping. If you get confused or lost, you can just use the question mark function and type in question mark ggplot. And it tells you in this little panel over here, what are your arguments that you may or may not be missing? So for mapping, I'm going to type it and then explain it in a second. All right, so the x equals luck means the variable we're going to be graphing is the luck variable in Ken Palm's data set. It is here. It's supposed to say how lucky a team gets. The AES is super important. 
if you're using something inside of a data frame, so if you're, it's a column inside your data frame, you must use the AES function. If it is not at all related to your data frame, don't use it. But if it is, you have to use the AES function. So if we run this, let's look at what it gives us. It should pop up in your pa panel over here. It should, you should be able to click plots. And what that does is it pulls up this background, kind of gives you your scale, your x-axis, whatever, what it's supposed to look like. And what we're going to do is we're going to layer stuff on top of it. So GG stands for grammar of gra graphics. That's what the GG plot two stands for. So what we're doing is layering stuff on top. So that first layer, it gives us this background. Now we're going to add something on top of it. Um, does everybody know what a histogram is? Cool. So to do a histogram or most other types of graphs is a geom underscore whatever we want to make. So if we make a histogram, geom underscore histogram, we can run it and it gives us a histogram of the lock. You may say, oh, well, these little bars right here, each one of those is too narrow. We want them to be wider. We can use an argument called bins. And it makes those a little bit fatter. Or we can say more bins for even skinnier ones. The default is 30, but I'm just going to choose 40 because that, that's what I have written down. Everybody good? If you got the data set right in, could you would you be able to get to this point? Like with cool. All right. One of the other things you can do is you can save a ggplot image to, I'm sorry, you can save a ggplot to a variable that goes up here and layer on it and just keep on going. So we're going to do that. We're going to say luck equal or gets the assignment operator this. We're going to add something else in here. We're going to add an AES y equals dot, oh, dot, dot, density, dot, dot. So what that does is it scales our y-axis to make the whole area under this curve one. That may sound a little bit confusing, but I'll explain why in a second. It's very, very useful. Um, so we can do that. We can make our bins equal to 40. And we can pick a color for it as well. So pick a color. Anybody have a preference? Orange. No. Red. Good answer. Orange is a terrible color. So that didn't run. Why did it run? Well, because we saved it to a variable. So let's look at it. Print luck. There it is. There's our red. If we want the bars to actually be filled in the color red, we're going to use fill instead. All good? Let's see, how would, how would you make this graphic look better? Any, raise your hand, answer. Somebody, Pat? Title. Title. That looks kind of ugly, right? This is okay, but we, sometimes we might want to change it, right? So what we're going to use is the lab statement to add these different labels. So we already have luck, right? We just made that up here. We're gonna do a plus sign. Plus sign adds on layers. The lab statement, we wanna change the title. So let's use title equals, we'll just say histogram of luck. Our X lab, so this bottom one, we like that. So we can either just leave it blank or we can explicitly say what we want. So X equals luck. We want Y equal to density but with a capital D, because that kind of looks nicer. And the most important part, the caption. You may say, I don't need a caption, but yes, you do. Captions are always for giving credit. So there's two people you need to give credit to, yourself for making it, and somebody else for the data, unless the data is yours. So the data viz, there's a couple different ways you can do it. You can say viz by your name, I usually put on my Twitter handle because um, that's where I post my graphs. 
So that way, if someone screenshots it and tries to share it somewhere else, like it has your name already on it and you get credit for it, right? I like that. In the same way, we also need to give credit to who gives you the data. So you can say something like data from kinpom.com. Because you didn't get that data yourself, you have to give credit to where you got it from. What's up? Do you have a question? I guess not. Okay. Okay, sorry. Um, Ken Palmer really kind of went on a rant on TV about that. Like, hey, give credit to your data. So now let's look at what our plot looks like. Much better. All right, we have a title. We have a caption, all this stuff. For our competition with Villanova, if you do not have the caption, like, you're almost automatically disqualified. So, like, it's worth a lot of points because it's that necessary. Next. One of the things that we want to be able to do is we want to make this kind of like a smooth curve. That would be nice, kind of help with look better. So we can use genome density. It gives what's called a density curve. Hence why we have that y axis labeled density. And so let's pick a color for that. So we can say color equals blue. All right. And let's say we want, that would just do the line for the density curve. So we want the fill to be the same color. So let's look at that for a second. That's not good. <laughs> now we can't see our actual data, right? So there's a very, not a variable, there's an argument called alpha. Now, since we overwritten, overwrote, and overwrote, we need to go back and run all of ours from the beginning. So if we set our alpha values, alpha goes from one, which is opaque, which means you can't see through it, like this one, to zero, where you can see completely through it, and there's not any kind of showing that like you had it anyways. So nice in between is 0 0.5. I also want to change the light blue. Beat Carolina, but the color is kind of pretty for, for graphs. So let's look at it now. You can kind of see that light blue background over the red histogram. Does that make sense to everybody? Do we want, do we want to go back to the dark blue? All right, let's go back to the dark blue. Again, that's one of the nice things about graphs. You can just keep on typing it over and over. Got it. There, that looks, that's better. Are you reading my notes or? Am I, no. Okay, that's what's next. Okay, cool. So luck, we want to center the titles because it does look shifted to the left. And if I made this bigger, you would see that the caption is shifted to the right with an F, shifted. Um, so the way we can do that, is with the theme function. So the first thing we want to change is the plot title. And what we do is element underscore text h just equals 0 0.5. You can memorize it if you want. If you just get used to typing it, that's fine. That's why I'm at. But I always just Google how to center titles in ggplot2. And it's the first thing that pops up. So that's the nice thing about R Tom, also is that you can say, oh, how do I do this? Google. Ah, that's how you do it. Back to programming. And then just it just keeps looping. It's the same in lo lots of other programming languages too. So if we want to center the caption, we do plot.caption equals the same exact thing. L underscore text. HS equals 0 0.5. That works the same way. Zero is all the way to the left. One is all the way to the right. 0 0.5 is center. So let's look at it. Good graph. Okay, so does that, that graph look good to everybody? So let's say we want to save it. Let's say I want to post it on Twitter and get a billion likes, more than likely just two, but you know, is what it is. We're gonna use this GG save function. So the file name that we want to save it as is whatever you want to save it as. So luck histogram dot png dot jpeg whatever you use some kind of indie on it for like what kind of file you want to output 
And then what file do you want to save? Well, you want to do the plot is is the luck plot. Default is the last plot you made, so it would be work. It would work now, but just to be explicit, it's good to go ahead and save. Save it. Cool. Where did it go? Where did we save it to? Anybody have any idea? Yeah, it's in your working directory. So let's look. So I'm going to check my working directory. It's in that same one I was in. And there's my luck histogram in pretty picture form. Any questions about this one? Yeah. So what you need to do is you need to um, rerun stuff from the beginning. Because what it does, it just keeps adding on layers and adding on layers and adding on layers. So if you already have something that's not see-through and you have something else that's partially see-through on it, you still can't see this bottom layer, right? Does that make sense? Yeah, I got you. So what I was following along until we got to like that alpha part. Yeah. So some things that people do to like get around this is they make these different. So like here we have luck. All right, let's make this luck two. So that way if we look at luck, all right, that's good. That works there. All right, that added my captions and titles and whatnot. So we want to add on to luck two, to luck three, and then we'll look at it. All right, that gives you the see-through, so on and so forth. Any other, good question. Thank you for bringing that up. Anybody else stuck, having issues? Yeah. Yes. So what that does is that tells you how big your image is when you save it. There, if you wanted to change that, the way you can do that is in your GG save statement. That's a good point. You can do width equals. So let's look how big mine was when I did it back up here. It said 4.09 by 3.46. Those are weird numbers. If I wanted to, I could do four. And then my height is 3.5. Gives me kind of round numbers, which is nice because what it does, it bases off this. So if you had it really wide, like here, it looked different versus if it was really narrow and tall. So those are those graphs show different things. Probably some's not better than others. So that's setting your explicit width and height um, is nice for your plots. Good question. Anybody else? Cool. We're going to make one more plot. This one's a little bit better than this, one, or the new plot is going to be a little bit better than this one. So what we're going to do, oh, I don't want to save this. I already have a copy of it. So what we want to do now is we want to compare based on different conferences. So in our Ken Palm data frame, we have each team listed. And then we have our conferences and stuff. So if we want to compare how good is the SEC versus the ACC versus the Big Ten versus the SWAC, whatever, this is how we can do something like that. We're going to make a copy of it. So we're going to call it Ken Palm by conference. We're going to save Ken Palm. So what that does, just makes a copy under a different name. The next part is the important part for the competition we're having against Bill Nova. This is stuff that you need to know to be able to make these visualizations. So we're going to resave it to Ken Palm by conference. We're going to say Ken Palm by conference. Type. We're going to use the group underscore by function. Anyone want to guess what that does? It groups them. Yes. So we want to group by conference. So what that does in R, it tells each it tells R to do everything in groups. And we're gonna see kind of why that's important in a second. So now we're gonna get summary stats. So we're gonna use the summarize function. So let's say we wanna find the mean rank by conference, right? 
notice the parentheses for summarize is this one down here, okay? We can say rank is the new variable we wanna make equals mean rank in a dot remove equals true. What this does is it takes the rank of all the teams per conference and averages them. So we have an average of the SEC teams, average of the ACC teams, average of the Big Ten, et cetera. The na.remove, if you have an na, it absolutely ruins everything. So if you na.remove equals true, it does not calculate that in the average. Because if I asked you guys, what's the average of three and five, you'd say three plus five is eight, five by two is four. If I said an average of three, five, and NA, you couldn't do it. So the answer is NA, which doesn't really help you at all. That's why I have to do the NA.remove. So the next thing we want to do is find our, our mean um, adjusted efficiency margin by conference. You know what that means? No, I don't either. So what, we're just going to go with it. See, uh, adjusted efficiency margin equals same principle, mean adjusted efficiency margin in and out remove equals true. All of that is in the same summarized statements. You can kind of see the colors that's red and that's red versus those being orange. So all that goes inside of your summary statement. We're going to pipe. It means we're going to do something else. I usually translate the word pipe to be the word then. So first we're grouping by, then we're summarizing, and then, well, if you have stuff in groups and you need it all back together, what do you think you need to do? What function do you think you should use? It really easy naming convention. If you want to undo groups, ungroup, yes. Keep it simple. Got to ungroup. After we ungroup, we're going to want to add a column. So what we're going to do is we're going to make it a contrast between power conferences and non-power conferences. So we're going to have a mutate statement. Mutate allows you to add a column onto your already existing data frame. Does that make sense? Have I lost anybody? Just want to double check. Am I good? Okay. Uh, the keyboard shortcut for pipe is control shift M. Somebody asked in the chat rather than typing percent greater than percent. Uh, so mutate. So we are new variable, we're gonna call it power six equals, if we wanna do it based off a certain characteristic, we use the case underscore win function. It's kind of like conditional logic if you've heard of that. Um, so we wanna say if our conference is in the following vector, then we need, we want to make it a power conference. So what is our power conferences in basketball? We have the ACC, the SEC, the Big 10, the Big 12, the Big East, and the Pac-12. It's hard to see all of it at once. So then we're gonna do this little tilde sign uh, it should be the key above tab on the left side of your keyboard. So everybody can find that. So that's saying if, if your conference is one of these, then we want to assign it power conference. Okay. Does that make sense? This, is, this part is a little bit tricky. So if you're lost, don't feel embarrassed. Feel free to ask or raise a hand or whatever. Okay. Otherwise, we're going to put true, which means if this condition is false, anything else that happens, no matter what else our conference is, it's going to be true. Otherwise, we're going to make it a non-power conference. Good. So what does this code actually do? Let's hope it did what we want it to. Let's look at it. All right. It says error in group by. Comp is not found. Well, that's great. So let's look up here. Ah, I forgot to type an underscore. That was actually easier to debug than I thought. 
Okay, so let's look. We have 32 observations of four variables. We have our conference. Ooh, one for each conference. We have our average rank, have our average adjusted efficiency margin, and we have our conference label. So is it a power conference like the ACC or the Big Ten, Big 12, Big East, et cetera, or is it a non-power conference? So one thing that just can be useful, let's say other sports, let's say we have stats per game, let's say for football, right? So if we have Russell Wilson's passing stats for game one, it'd be good to have him separated from game two, but let's say we want to find like his average passing yards. Well, you can use this grouping by Russell Wilson and then summarize yards equals average yards or mean yards. You kind of get his average for the whole season, right? Now let's actually graph this. I'm doing okay on time. So what, oh, I need to go over that first. What is special about the power six conference or the power six variable? How many different answers can we have for this? Two. Two. So this is like a category of variable. It's either a power conference or it's not a power conference. Um, so one way we could indicate this and let R know that it's, a category of variable is using what's called a factor. So we can say Ken Palm underscore by underscore conference because our data frame dollar sign power six. That's saying we're going to assign this column power six. What do we want to assign it? We want to assign it the same column, but as a factor. So we use the factor function to make it a factor. Sometimes you may have stuff that is non-numeric, such as rank. Let's say if we want to make rank a factor variable because the first team is always better than the second team is always better than the third team, right? We can't, it would make sense to add the first rank team plus the second rank team, right? That's why you would use a factor variable. Or if you have a limited options like this, same principle. All right, lots of talking, not many pretty pictures. So let's do that. We're going to use the ggplot function. What's our first argument for the ggplot function? Yes, our data. Somebody else, what do we type in? Ken Palm by conference. Would you mind showing the power conference line again? That looked better, whoever that asked, Sam. All right, so Ken Palm by conference. Next, what's our next thing that we need? Mapping. mapping. Somebody else. What do we have to use for our mapping if we're not talking, or if we are talking about something inside of our data frame? A yes, thank you. So we're gonna do X is our adjusted efficiency margin. And we're gonna say our Y is our rank. Close that off. Make sure our parentheses match. We have one, two open and one, two close. We're good. I spelled something wrong. Ah, Kim Palm. Yep. So let's look again. Thank you. This is why you don't code live. Aha. Uh -huh. So we have our X and Y axis set up. That's good. So if we want to make a um, plot where it shows the points, if we want to plot, all right, this is the this is the uh, this is the x variable, this is the average of adjusted efficiency margin, and this is the average. What do you think we would need to do to get points? It's geom underscore something. I haven't taught you, but not not scatter point. Let's look at that. So it has those on there. As you can tell, the higher the rank, the lower the adjusted efficiency probably is. The better the, the lower the rank, the better the team, the better that is. So that's cool. But what was the point of us doing that by conference if you can't see anything with the conferences, right? So one thing that's really cool, inside of your geomes or your geom point, your geom histogram, your geom box plot, whatever you want to do, you can still do an AES statement. And let's say color equals, we're gonna make it that power six conference or the power six grouping. 
and it groups it by whether it's a power or not. So as you can see, your power conferences, your power five, and then I'm not sure exactly who that is because it's the 2019 data, are very much the better ranked teams on average and have the higher efficiency margin than the non-power conferences. Kind of makes sense to everybody. That's why teams get more bids than others. So let's let's do a couple more things. Um, how do I add my title? What function do I use? Labs. Yep. Title equals conferences by rank and adjusted um, em. Right. X adjusted em. You may not be familiar with that term, so let's go ahead and write it out. Adjusted efficiency margin. Our Y is our rank. Got it. Oh, not equal sign. So everything looks good except for one thing kind of looks kind of ugly. What would that be? Well, it looks kind of ugly about this graph. Yeah, someone, someone kind of whispered it, power six. There is a way that we can change this, so don't worry. So what do we use to get this key and do the coloring? What do we do? We said blank equals power six. Color. Okay. So we can just do that in our labs as well. Color equals power six conferences. Cool. Which ones are our power six conferences? Well, we might want to add a subtitle for that. Power six conferences are ACC, SEC, Big Ten, Big Twelve. Um, Big East, Pack Twelve. Ah, I forgot to put a comma. There you go. Make this a bigger chart. Better. So let's do like Pat suggested earlier, let's center stuff. What function do we use to center stuff? Theme. So let's adjust the title. Uh, Subtitle. And um, that's good. Flip. So we're looking better. What are we missing? Caption. Thank you. All right. So let's just say caption. Um, this by NC State SAC data from kinpalm.com. And same thing here, we can center it. I know it's eight. Uh, we're like three lines of code from being done. So if you want to stick around for that, if you want to leave, that's fine, but we have like literally three lines of code left. All right, the last thing we want to do, what if we don't like this color blue, greenish, and we don't like that red? How, do we, how can we change those colors? We can use a function called scale color manual. Color manual. Your argument for this is values equals, and we need to give it a vector. So the vector is coming, it's a little bit different. So we'll say our power conferences equals this mess. Does anybody recognize what this is? 
hex code over to that good job so what this does it interprets it in red green and blue so the first two characters are are the red how much red we want to input the next two are how much green the last two are how much blue rgb and the scale is from zero zero to ff is kind of how we say how much red or blue we want to add so we have a lot of red no blue i'm sorry no green and no blue so we red let's say we want our non-power conference equal to let's try all zeros we have no red no green no blue what color do you think that would be black so let's look at it and you can see our plot whoops it's gonna spell something wrong see none of these are colored because i spelled something wrong what did i call this today power conference and power non-power conference here i call it conferences and with an s wrote it down wrong in my notes much prettier right and then we can gg save that set our dimensions same as before any questions did you learn something did, we, did i lose you more importantly let's hope that doesn't happen awesome um that's the end of our meeting today sorry for going over about three minutes um hope to see y'all next week if you have any questions feel free to come up and ask me or if you're on zoom ask me in the chat that's fine as well